local state senator has got a lot of thoughts on truck tolls, security, the refugees, all of that tonight. One of my favorite state senator, Lou Raptakis, is my guest, and of course, he's always bringing something from the restaurant. That's uh, and, 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 and chubby guys can't eat pizza, Lou. But uh, you'll see Lou here in just a, a couple of minutes. How are you? Chubby guys get this way by eating pizza, by the way. Uh, on this Monday evening, it is a pleasure to have you aboard. Short week, right? Everyone's kind of looking forward to a Thanksgiving break. At the same time, the world is. You know, fairly tense. How'd you like to be doing Thanksgiving in Belgium right now? Uh, my state of mind, welcome to it. Let's check into the rundown and uh, cover a couple things, and then we'll get to our guest on a variety of subjects. I just caught this in the Providence Journal today. I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, there's a picture of Amy Kemp, who's the lead spokesperson for the Attorney General's office, and she and I have had our challenges, and I've often criticized her, but this is not literally about her. She's just one of the higher priced PR people in the state. Uh, I remind you of, of the money grab that the state has is, is, is got going on all the time. This headline from the DOT, they want another $25 million in the budget. So in the context of that and other budgetary issues, think about what's happening at the uh, public relations level of state government. This story uh, that Kathy Gregg put together uh, relates to 53 public relations professionals earning 4.3 million dollars out of the state budget and they range from 42 grand to 134 thousand dollars a year uh, and when asked about it the, <laughs> the public relations person for the governor says oh well you know the pr professionals are only 0.18 percent of the total state employee population well that's really not the point the point is whether or not they're being effective and i just have to say this about the story that building right there has a lot of people who are spinning but, you know, some of them are very good. Some of them we work with here every day to schedule the folks that you see on television and certainly on the radio on WPRO. Is that where I work at? WPRO weekdays noon to 3. Some of them stink the joint out. Some of them are overpaid, not because of their line item, but because of their competence. And some of them are nothing more than gatekeepers, meaning protecting public officials from scrutiny and answering questions and so it's kind of a mixed bag but the thing that i'm kind of cracking up about over the whole thing is that you got 53 people who have been identified many of whom have a salary named in the providence journal many of whom when they go to the pr christmas party here at the uh, end of the season will probably be looking at each other and saying hey you know what i don't make as much as you you buy the beers <laughs> uh way too much dough way too much dough i don't care what they make i care about the volume of people that we know we do not need. Uh, taking a look at uh, our next item. Now, if you're watching at 7.30, you're, you're waiting for the ball game to begin. If you're watching at 11.30, it's, or 12 o'clock on Fox Providence, you've already seen it. One way or the other, security was high at Gillette for the game against the, the Bills. The headline uh, indicates so. And, uh, you know, it, it's all about what's been happening in the NFL and in many arenas across the country right now based on the Paris attacks. The, poignant part of this evening's events will be the moment of silence that is uh, uh, provided for uh, the gentleman in the next headline who passed a teenager, Ezra Schwartz, who went to the West Bank, you know, between high school and college to better himself and learn more about his faith, was killed there. Obviously, uh, a sad moment for him and his family and everybody around. He's also a major league Patriot fan, and so the Patriots doing the right thing will pay tribute to him this evening. But, you know, the security situation is is one which is really, really kind of a nail biter. Maybe not necessarily here, knock wood, but in Belgium, they are paralyzed right now. Absolutely, positively par paralyzed. This, this headline comes from the BBC around 2.30 this afternoon as they continue to search. Uh, NPR shows you that they are on lockdown in Belgium and have been uh, for, for quite some time. And here's the latest from CBS on the story itself. Belgian authorities are warning that a Paris-like attack is imminent, targeting shopping areas and public transportation. Drastic security measures have been put in place in Brussels, including closing schools for the first time since World War II. Last night, security forces were beefed up across the capital 
Then, in a series of coordinated strikes, 19 police raids were conducted late into the night, spanning across the city. At a press conference that followed, Belgian federal prosecutor Eric van der Speet announced that 16 people had been arrested in the police operations and two shots had been fired. And so Europe's most wanted man, Salah Abdeslam, remains on the run. A suspect in the Paris attacks, he evaded police on that night and slipped back into Belgium. Belgian police have their hands full. Not only are they searching for Abdeslam, but they are hunting for a number of people they believe are behind this imminent terror plot. I mean, what a way to live, right? And then late this afternoon, just prior to our putting the broadcast together for this evening, the Prime Minister more or less said any minute now. I can confirm that the threat for an attack is imminent and serious and uh, we want to ask our population to stay calm and alert. We have serious indications that an attack on or attacks on different locations at the same time can take place and that's why uh, we have taken these measures. Uh, yeah, I mean, how do you, how do you live that way? I, I, I just don't... Uh... Uh, I don't know how these folks are doing it. So cross your fingers and hope they get this guy and the cell that they're worried about um, before any of that happens. And speaking of terrorism and reaction to it, Donald Trump is, I don't know, uh, I, I don't know what's going on in his head. Uh, media are trying to find the thousands of people that he said in Jersey were celebrating the day of 9-11. Here's his latest. where thousands and thousands of people were cheering as that building was coming down. Thousands of people were cheering. Yeah, you know, I've got a lot of people who are upset with me from our radio show today where I was asking the question, now, how do you trust a guy who makes the stories up like this? Now look, there were, there were pockets of people that were cheering, you know, Muslim or otherwise, in New Jersey on a couple of rooftops, as I recall, but not thousands in Jersey City, as he tried to proclaim. He was tested on it on this week with uh, uh, Chris, uh, George Stephanopoulos, rather, on, on ABC, and, and he had no answer other than it happened, it happened, it happened. And I've been inundated with videos and all sorts of other uh, press clippings from people trying to prove that what he said is true. And, it's not. Now look, there are a lot of politicians that lie, and I guess, I guess Donald Trump has joined the crowd. Credibility is kind of important when you want to be president, both on the Republican and the Democratic side. Hillary, you too. But it's, uh, it's getting bad out there. Uh, and speaking of just all this repercussion from what's happened in Paris, we've got all sorts of conversation on refugees, and that's our first topic of conversation. Uh, we had a lot of conversation about it last week. You know, U.S. leaders calling on uh, acceptance of refugees and even here in Rhode Island there's been a whole big conversation about that and some lawmakers have been fighting about it back and forth one lawmaker who has got a perspective on it is our state senator from Coventry East Greenwich West Greenwich Leonidas Reptekis sir good to see you absolutely good likewise to be here you I originally uh, invited you to come in and talk about truck tolls because you've got a whole perspective on that and then all that blank hits the fan in Europe, and you, you know, you're a world traveler. You're going to Greece, your, your your home country here. What next week to visit? And I know you've got a lot of thoughts on it, but you also say you've got some thoughts on what's been happening here in Rhode Island and the debate over whether or not we should be accepting Syrian refugees. So tell me what your thought process is. Well, the on issue that. is everybody says Syrian refugees, the the individuals that are migrating to Europe and traveling through Greece, over 800,000 to date. That's one of the largest, the largest number uh, traveling through the country of Greece. And they have easy access because of Turkey. The problem is they're not Syrian refugees. They're refugees using an excuse of the Syrian crisis. You have refugee individuals coming from Pakistan, Bangladesh, Iraq, Afghanistan. And they're just using that excuse to come through uh, Syria and then through Turkey and come through the Greek islands and then to, the, uh, to, to Europe. I think the problem here is that you've got two camps in Rhode Island. You've got one saying no, close the door, and you have another side saying open the door. 
Uh, it can't, it, look, we have a policy here in the United States to accept individuals coming to the U.S. My issue here is that if we do have Syrian Americans here in Rhode Island that grew up in Rhode Island, why can't they invite, if they have a close relative who is escaping the civil war in Syria, to be allowed through the vetted process? And that's probably going to be a very, very small number. But I'm also opposed to just dropping 10,000 individuals in Rhode Island without being there, not, not even allowing that many people. If it's a close relative... Well, nobody's talking about 10,000 refugees in Rhode Island. The, the, the president's talking about 10,000 refugees in America. Well, uh, it could well it could be a lot more than that. I don't think it's 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 that well, small Well, the first year. I think there's a number that runs between 60,000 uh, 60, and 100,000 over a over course of time. But the issue here is whatever the number is, there is a system in place. Let's not bypass the system. You have many Rhode Islanders, whether coming from any country in the world, that are allowed to bring a relative of theirs to Rhode Island or to any other state. Well, listen, Keep here's the, the process here's the way thing. it is. We've had much discussion about this in the last week or two. The truth of the matter is, is this is a federal call. Correct. This whole harangue at the State House last week is, is, is really... Not even needed. It's, well, if you want to participate in the argument in the context of what Washington is doing, then everyone has a right to their First Amendment exercise to talk about it. But to debate and to chastise the governor for, uh, look, uh, you know, uh, uh, the governor has not been on a, a wonderful wavelength with me on some issues lately, truck tolls included, but I will tell you, she doesn't need a whipping over something that she really has no direct no responsibility control. for. And we have another issue with the visa waiver program. I think the visa waiver Huge. program, correct right now, we have 38 countries that are under the visa waiver program, mostly in Europe. You can have a, a, a national from France, uh, Belgium, the, the Netherlands, Germany, that can use the visa waiver program and get into the United States a lot quicker, which is probably 30 days, maybe even less, to arrive in the U.S. once their visa has been uh, approved. They have to go to the U.S. Embassy in that individual country that is accepted under the program, uh, go in front of a counselor uh, official, go through the questionnaire, and then granted the visa. And they can be here a lot faster. But I think what's happening is because of what we see in Europe, what's happening in the uh, bombings in uh, Paris and the uh, upheaval in, uh, in uh, Brussels, as we speak, it's a lo lockdown on the city, and the migration of individuals going through Europe, I think that's the fear. I think we've got to cool it a little bit, and I think the current process is, is fine. I just don't want to also uh, add uh, more individuals coming here because they're trying to escape a uh, civil war. If they're escaping the civil war and they have roots in the United States, like I said before, relatives here, maybe that's the avenue we should allow those individuals to come in. All right, uh, point well made. When we come back, we'll talk about some things here at home. Stay with us. Just some of the just some of the scenes of, of refugee activity, for lack of a better term. Certainly not uh, recreational activity, that's for sure. Before we, we get to some of the local issues like truck tolls, because I know that there are a lot of things on your mind. You're going to Greece. I just wanted to follow up. Uh, how many times have you been to Greece? Uh, in my entire life, quite a few times. Yeah. I, my, both my parents are buried in Greece. My mother died here, and my father died while vacationing in Greece. We have a home in Greece. Uh, all my relatives live in Greece. So it's it's... That's where I go to visit my um, And you're selling your, 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 your restaurants. It was 36 years in a food business. Kids have grown up. Both kids are graduating. My daughter graduated from URI. My son is in uh, computer engineering. They don't want no part of it. How long can you take it? It's been a, it's been a long career. So well, it's time bring, to do he, something else. And the senator did uh, bring by some, uh, some, uh, some pizzas from there. You know, I, because he's mad at me because I haven't, I've never stopped by the restaurant. It was, have you, are you found, are you transacting quickly or? Well, it's going to be, we've got the interesting parties right now looking at the, uh, okay. at the. Uh, so that's caused you business. to say, look, I want to know the business model. You're going to Greece, not for a family vacation, but on business. You've developed a consulting company Correct. and you're doing what with, with the. Well, we're representing an American Greece. company. Uh, in Greece? Uh, no, here in the U.S. Uh, regarding fuel additives to try to cut down on pollution in the Greek maritime uh, industry. We're uh, representing a uh, another Greek beverage company to 
come into the U.S., bringing a cola product with uh, no sugar here to the U.S. So there's a lot of uh, so what, clients. So what is that work? In, how does that work inform you on the entire refugee challenge? I know you wanted to make one more sure. closing comment on the refugee marketplace as it exists right now. Well, it, those issues are dear to my heart. As you know, Greece is going through a, a serious yeah. crisis, economic crisis, and the refugee part is probably putting a huge burden on, on Greece, especially a lot of the Greek islands where we've had over 800,000 refugees cross into Greece within this year alone. Usually it's about maybe about 120,000, 140,000, and I blame the, the, the problem rests on, on Europe. I mean, they've never addressed this issue over many years. If you remember in Labedusa, a small island off Italy, how many refugees from Africa have been coming through that uh, area. Now we have the Greek issue because Turkey and Greece, the Greek islands are what, a mile, two miles off the Turkish coast, over two million so-called refugees in Turkey. But a lot of these individuals aren't coming through uh, to Greece for uh, refugee escaping the civil war in Syria. They're coming for economic issues. And look, it's a free passport practically to come into Europe. And though there's a lot of issues. And uh, my colleagues in government here, Greek American legislators, members of Congress, we're uh, pushing to see what assistance uh, U.S. government can provide to try to see who are these individuals coming through the Greek islands and into Europe, and it could be a potential uh, terrorism issue. Okay. When we come back, we're going to get to that local issue, which is tolls, our original premise for having the state senator on. He's got a lot going on. Stay with us. So, yeah. And truck tolls, I don't know if we're going to accomplish all of our solutions here in the six or seven minutes that we have with State Senator Lou Raptakis, but uh, recently uh, Lou was part of a headline. Uh, he's got uh, some attention for some of his thoughts on this. I think we've got a headline or two uh, on that. If we can uh, throw that up, that would be a, a pleasure. Do we? Yes? No? If we don't, we shall move along. Um, do we, guys? Do we have a headline? There we go. There we go. Reject tolls clouded in secrecy. What is your point of view on this? Point of view, since uh, the vote in the Senate, Senate bill had passed back in June. It's died ever since. It didn't go anywhere. How did you vote on that, by the I way? I voted for it. Yeah, nice job there, pal. Uh, voted for it because at the time, what I was hearing is that the uh, toll would be only on trucks and instead of raising the gasoline tax, because here in Rhode Island, we're not in the middle of Utah. Our closest border state is about a mile, a mile away from here, Massachusetts. Rhode Islanders can go to Massachusetts, Connecticut, purchase their gasoline. We'd be losing money, not making any money if we raised the gasoline tax. Since then, there's been a lot happening. And I think right now, it was misjudgment in my, in my vote. I'll admit it. I'm not going to stop making excuses why I voted for the tolls. I think we should take a time out. I think we shouldn't even have another toll bill, a truck toll bill, come in front of us in the General Assembly in 2016. And I think what we should do is form a study commission. I know you don't like the word study commission. Invite all the stakeholders, the public, everyone, make your case. And then look at it slowly throughout the entire course of 2016 and then make a decision toward the end of the General Assembly session. What do we do? I think right now there's a lot of uh, solutions. I like. One of the plans that we should pay as we go, we found $24 million in the budget to repeal the sales tax for all businesses using electricity, propane, natural gas, number two oil. We found $24 million. If we can find another 24 to $50 million out of that $4.2 billion budget, it's not an $8.4 billion budget because that's federal receipts, half of it, I think we can make our case pay as we go along. And I didn't like the fact, Dan, that 90% of that $500 million was going to go for Route 10, Conduit, the, that project. Oh, it reminds a, a me of 38 lane. studios. It reminds me of another 38 studios. We're promising that all this money is going to fix all our roads and bridges in Rhode Island, but yet the majority of that money, correct me if I'm wrong, $400 million is going for the Route 10 interchange. I also think they can get a match from the feds for that, for that, for, for that because oh. it's going to cost double that to, to build this bus lane over the multiple bridges that the Route 610 connector actually provide. Well, I'm glad you're, you're coming around. You're usually, even though you're a Democrat, you usually have had a pretty conservative fiscal approach to things, a pretty even-handed approach. Uh, yeah, I don't mind a study commission. Listen, the longer we delay uh, uh, putting this clamp on our infrastructure costs, I mean, to have double the cost of principal and interest 
of, what, of the money that we're going to spend over a 30-year period of time. We've had economists from Brown say it's a good idea. Look, it's stimulus. It's going to create jobs. You, you dump a bunch of money, a bunch of money borrowed or otherwise into the into the economy for construction. You're going to create jobs, but. The, the major, but the payback also. But the major project is supposed to be rehabbing the, the infrastructure. If this is just a jobs program, well, be honest about it just being a jobs program. I'm talking about the governor here. Uh, what do you think the pulse is in the Senate, a chamber that passed this thing lickety-split, held up by the House last year? Do others feel the same way you do? Well, I hope so. I think that we should not be taking a vote. There is too much. You're talking, by the time we pay back this this toll toll uh, roads and bridges you're talking about 1.2 billion that's a lot of money and what are the ghosts in this project I keep saying it 38 studios when it's going to be only for one specific the majority of that money one specific project what about the roads in Westerly what about the roads and bridges and other sections of Route 95 down in exit 5 West Greenwich the overpass is the okay, poor so one. You're, you, you correlate to 38 because it's sure. 75 million for one company you're, the, the you know, having the preponderance of the eighty percent of the money for one location, you right. feel like it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Speaking of thirty-eight studios, what do you think about what the house is doing and the oversight? It's just, this has been one half, you know what, job by state government in finally purging, cleansing, investigating, and learning and holding people accountable for this this debacle. What a slow, it, it, tepid, uh, it's, it's, awful uh, response. It's unbelievable because in the 2013 budget, I had a floor amendment to stop the payments of 38 studios. And everyone was saying, and, and kick in the uh, SEC, come in and investigate. Oh, no, you can't do that. We're going to be the first state to default. It's unprecedented. Our bond ratings are going to go down. Look what happens a year and a half later. We have an investigation. That should have been done a year and a half ago. It should have been done in 2013. Try to stop uh, adding, uh, paying back uh, certain amounts of money back to the 38 studios. I think that I really think that we should really go forward and bring in the. Well, uh, there's some. Bring, there's a listen. There's a shilling subpoena that's going to be issued. Big deal. He ain't showing up. That's exactly. We need a big commission on this. I think we should bring the Securities Exchange Commission and really investigate what took place from uh, from from day one. All right. What's your last thought? It's going to be an interesting year coming up in 2016 for all Rhode Islanders. And I think that we should have cool ahead, especially especially the Syrian refugee crisis. A lot of people are panicking on, on that issue. So I, I think we should, oh, both parties, both sides. I don't think they're panicking. I think they're, this is the easy stuff. Yell and scream about things that you have no real power over, rather than to making the hard decisions on the things you do have power over, right? Isn't that always the case yeah, exactly. with, uh, with your brethren in the elected world? I like to think that most of the time you uh, avoid that kind of nonsense, but we watch you too. You know what, though? I got to give you credit. I only got 20 seconds here. At least you come here, and it's not the first time you said, you know, I rethought something. Your vote was a mistake on the tolls. You say so. I think people respect that. And then we move forward. Good luck with the sale of the restaurant. Thank you. All right. Good luck with your new consultancy. Thank you. Safe trip to Greece. We'll just know how it goes. All right? I will. Last word, and we come back. Stay with us. So, uh, this is the American Music Awards last night, the Pentatonics, who are giving you the Star Wars theme there. I'm told this is trending all over, and it may just cause me to actually watch the Star Wars movies, which I still haven't seen. I know I've never seen a Star Wars movie. I'll get to it. See you on the radio tomorrow at noon on WPRO. I'm back here tomorrow night. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.